Hello and welcome. We are going to explore the RT Toolbox 3 software this time. This is the simulation and offline programming solution that Mitsubishi uh, uses for their robots. It covers most of their robots. Um, and while providing fairly simple functionality in terms of programming, at the same time is a fairly high powered solution for the simulation and testing of solutions. As you can see from my screen, it is laid out in a standard Windows format with the home tab up top, online, 3D, information about views, and a help section. It also has, when it runs, the communication server that is automatically started. Creating a new project is fairly simple. Just click on new. So we are going to create a new project and let's call it video. Uh, let's call it let's call it intro video. Okay. We can tell it whether or not we want to display a 3D monitor of, of the robot. Um, we can leave that off for now. It will generate all the files necessary. And one of the things that it may do, just so you are aware, is put itself in the background. So other applications that you have up may pop up over top of RT Toolbox. Don't worry, that's pretty standard. Okay, so. Adding a project, you have to configure the system so it knows what to deal with, what type of robot you want. Um, uh, give it a name. We're going to call this uh, Robot 1. My robots are named 1, 2, 3, and 4. After you've selected the name, you can click on Next. You can provide comments if you wanted. You need to select what controller series you have. We have CR500s in our case. And you can pick the type of robot. Uh, six axis, five axis, Scara robots are the horizontal type. They have others. I am going to work with the Scara for now. Ours happen to have an 18 kilogram payload, and the model specifically is there. You'll notice as I've selected these options, the picture and the, the model has updated. Click on Next. You need to select the communications protocol you're using. We happen to be using Ethernet IP, not RS-232, so you want to change this to TCP IP. If you do not do this, if you forget to do that step right there, that is quite often the single most common reason for not being able to download information to the robot that I've noticed in the past. The system will try to default to your computer's settings for Ethernet information, you need to update that with whatever your information is. I'm going to leave this alone because at the moment I'm not connecting to a robot, but you do want to get in the habit of changing that immediately to the robot you're selecting. You can just come in here, click in the field, start typing, and cycle through as you need to. Click on Next. The software is smart enough to try to default to the language for the robot you're working with. Um, we're going to do ours in the Melfa Basic 4. It's regional language, this is just what your computer is using. Next. If you have an additional axis, or two, you can add those. I do not have any, so I can hit Next. Same thing with uh, robot additional access. You can come in and define stuff if you need to. We are not doing that. You can define the tool you're going to use, size, uh, things like that. We're going to leave that blank for now. That will be a future tutorial. And under weight and size, you can define how heavy the hand is. Now the reason you would want to do this is eventually there are some functions and some of the advanced functions in the software 
that will let you calculate things like actual time uh, that your it allow you to calculate the actual time it takes for your program to run and to appropriately accommodate acceleration, deceleration, things like that. We're done, so we're going to hit finish. It will go out and do what it needs to do. For now, click on simulation for your operation mode. If you are connected to a real robot, you can click online instead. Once again, it may push things to the background. That's fine. What you are waiting for is this to show up, the control panel to show up, and more importantly, in the workspace, you want to see under Robot 1, which is what I call this, remember, you want to see simulation show up. If you're going online, you'll see an online show up. In here, you can check to see what programs have been saved to the robot controller already. Uh, we have the operator panel already here and a bunch of other functionalities. We can monitor things like inputs and outputs, which we will get to in a future tutorial. Our menus up top, you'll notice now, have turned on some of the functionality. Anything that's been grayed out means it's unavailable at the moment. Um, I can manage what hands I've assigned to my robot. We'll get to that in a future tutorial. We can get into other functions and components to the simulation that are beyond what we want to deal with right now. I can make this window a little bit bigger so we can see the robot if we want. Move that over there. We can change things like the perspective, um, how we look at the robot. We can display a floor that shows where the floor is relative to the position of the robot and any objects that you've brought into the simulation. Uh, you can do some measurements. From the online tab up top, we can take it offline from simulation or if we're truly online with a physical robot, we can take it back offline. If you have defined multiple robots here, and you can, uh, you can select what robot is being displayed override the speed and you'll notice the options here are the same as the options over here so there are two places that you can go to if you want to start the program stop the program pause it things like that homes still here because we are in the simulation we cannot start a new uh, a new we cannot start a new workspace uh, but we can come offline, we can go back online if it's available, print things. The workspace tab brings up this menu structure here. Once we have our program open on our operation panel, if you click on jog, you can bring up controls on how to, you can bring up you you can click on jog and bring up the controls for moving the physical robot. This pull down menu here provides us with the ability to control how the robot is moved. We can move it one individual joint at a time. We can move it relative to the global XYZ coordinates of the robot. We can do it based on the tool of the robot. And then if we have uh, the desire, we can do a three axis XYZ or cylinder. Starting with joint, we can see that the robot moves as I move the slider. I can also do this with the plus and the minus. That'll do steps. If I double click on any of the position values, I can tell it to jump to a specific location. You'll notice it moved there. So if I make that 12, it's moved it 12 degrees there. If I put it in XYZ, this will move any and all joints required to get from where it is to the new position. It will generally do this in a straight line as well. So you can see a coordinate system here, but 
x is the, uh, let's turn off the floor and you can see my my different axes and if I do negative x you'll notice it moves that direction positive x moves that direction positive y negative y now you'll notice that at this point it's this last little section here it stopped moving that's because the joints have extended as far as they're going to be able to extend z positive z is up negative z is down I can only go down to negative 6 I can go up to a positive of 331 remember this is in millimeters because this is a scarer robot without additional axes nothing happens here nothing happens here but it does let me spin here if you want to change the camera's point of view of the robot left clicking and holding allows me to do this and so I can spin around that way right clicking allows me to pan scroll wheel if you have it zooms in and out as you can see this is a detailed model of the robot is everything on it no they didn't include the hose there they didn't include the wires past there part of that is just because of the complexity of trying to show that hose bend uh, part of it is it, it generally doesn't matter now if you are doing something that has a significant amount of cabling you will probably want to try to model hoses and other things that could potentially interfere with tooling parts or the robot one of the things you can do is generate a video of your program or of your activities even you don't even have to be running the program necessarily under record we have start stop and pause you can tell it to auto save if you want or when you hit stop it will ask you if you want to save it you can set the frames per second the 30 frames a second will give you the closest to a live video the downside is it will take up a lot more space 10 frames per second will give you a fairly choppy looking video but is still very much viewable as you can tell it defaults to 20 so I can hit start I can move the robot if I can grab that And then I can hit stop it will ask me where and how I want to save it give it a name it will create an AVI file you don't get a choice in that the file is saved in the same directory as where the rest of the project has been saved and so mine happens to be saving to this PC documents Here's my intro video. Here are all the files it saves. And if I go into videos, there's my intro demo. If I double click on this, I can play it with the default Windows player, but that does not always work as well. Because it is an AVI file, I suggest you use something like VLC. I don't know why it does this but if you tell it okay it seems to be happy and then here is my video
as you can see, it has recorded all of the actions that I took manually when I was working with my program. Once you're done with your program, you can go back offline. It may give you the option to save things if there's nothing that has, if there's something that has to be saved. And if you're looking for your project, if you need to save it and back it up, move it to another location, whatever, Wherever it saved it, you need to make sure you grab everything in the folder that you named. If you don't, if you only select one or two of these, you will not be able to open up your project in the future. This is very important and I can't stress it enough that if you do not copy the entire folder, you will not have saved or moved everything you need. I strongly suggest you right click on the folder tell it send to compressed zipped folder it will compress everything give you the option to name it and that is the file you want to copy backup submit whatever the action you need to do with your project is hopefully this has been helpful until next time have a great day